For Krima Media's Policy, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is political analyst Professor Raymond Sadna to discuss his column titled New Forms of Hope and Collectivity for Universal Emancipation in South Africa, Part 2. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. So, Professor, you refer to the present generation of young people not having experienced the earlier ANC or SACP that you were involved in. Are you not perhaps uh, romanticizing the qualities of the earlier ANC? Well, for a start, when you were involved in illegal organizations, you didn't have opportunities to get tenders or to get contracts. Your only opportunity was to get a club and to be locked up and get more clubs. Uh, that was what we looked forward to. And even before being arrested, you were not able to live in the same way as other people because you may have been doing certain things legally in the country, but secretly you had to do other things. So your life had to be a double life uh, with your illegal comrades or working on your own illegally. And that was often very difficult and dangerous. And that was stressful. So that um, I'm talking now about inside the country, but when you joined MK and went to the camps in Angola, the sort of food you got was often uh, rotten, or it was very unpleasant food from cans from far away. And people lived with the barest of necessities. So if you got involved in that, you had to have a level of dedication. But I mean, the truth of the matter is some of the people who got involved in that did later become corrupt. So we have to understand what was it that we did wrong that led some people to have led this life of commitment, dedication, and sacrifice, but later they turned their backs on it, and some of them have been charged. And in my own experience, I know some people who were very, very brave, but they later did corrupt things. So we need to understand it. But my experience of comrades in illegal work is one of people who, in the main, were very dedicated, almost entirely very dedicated, and the struggle was their life, as Mandela once said, the struggle is my life. And that is very different from today, because insofar as the word struggle is used, it's really to rationalize uh, getting wealthy at the expense of the poor. And you also suggest that there is no political party that appears to have uh, the will, vision, or organized base to address a crisis of this character, reaching into almost every aspect of our lives and uh, to build a new collective. So if so, Professor, where to from here? Just to explain why I say there's no party, uh, if we go back to that distinction between collective hope and privatization of hope. Most mm. of the political parties in this uh, new charter uh, pact between the DA and other parties are parties who believe in the privatization of hope, who make no pretense to argue for collective hope. They want the market forces to be set free and things like that. And that is not a way of ensuring that the poor have their hardships removed. Now, to try and set up a collective organization that will realize social hope, that is meet the needs of the poor, means we have to look around us. And there may be examples I mentioned before of people in communities where the state has not been doing its job, people in communities doing the work that is needed, like fixing potholes, cleaning up the environment, um, making sure that uh, roads are safe by help putting up signs or fixing uh, 
problems in the roads that ought to be done by the state. But because the state is not doing it, some of the communities are taking it upon themselves. Now, there are the seeds of something that can be built upon, which is already happening in some parts of the country. Uh, there is reference. I don't know myself whether everything is is true that is referred to of this DA premier candidate in KZN, Chris Pappas, uh, who apparently is doing things like that. So that there are people who are doing this, communities who are doing this, and maybe that it, those sorts of seeds need to be built on. I am not myself working on the ground, so I can't, I don't have a lot of experience, but the principle is valid whether one has experience or not, that you look around you for those things. So if there is no organization that can be a collective for social hope, are you not now conceding that the atmosphere of demoralization will continue, that there is no basis for, for building a broad movement based on social hope? Some people just give up without trying to find a solution. When you want to find a solution, when a situation is dire, you keep on working and looking until you find an answer. When I am writing now on hope, something I've never written on before, and it's new, it's difficult, but I believe it's got the germs of an explanatory power that can help us to understand the way forward. So we've got to look and what are the methods that we are using? What are the understandings that we are using? I myself am self-critical about my own understandings, and that's why I look at something new. And everyone must do that, and everyone must look at what they're doing and say, this has not worked. Why has it not worked? What should we have in place of it? So that is my suggestion. We don't, definitely don't succumb to, to demoralization and despair. That was political analyst Professor Raymond Sadna in conversation with policy discussing new forms of hope and collectivity for universal emancipation in South Africa, part two.